To develop the general second order dynamic model, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this mass spring damper system uh, where we have a mass that is attached to a spring, attached to a fixed wall, and is sliding on a surface that has viscous friction associated with it. Okay, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, do a force balance on the mass to determine how the position of this mass is going to change with time. Um, obviously, since we have two energy storage mechanisms, we have the mass itself, and uh, which is going to um, store kinetic energy, and we have the spring, which stores potential energy, we have a second order system, and we're going to expect a second order differential equation to model the dynamic behavior of this system. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a free body diagram of our mass. So I'm going to select my boundaries for my free body diagram to be my mass, and I'm going to come over here and draw that. All right, I'm also, which has already been defined for me, my coordinate system. I'm going to assume that the positive um, x direction and the positive uh, velocity will be to the uh, right. So on this mass, if I assume that uh, I have velocity in the positive, in this uh, positive direction and uh, my position is in the positive direction, I have two forces that I need to be concerned with that are acting on this mass. I have the force that's associated with the displacement of the spring, All right, and I have a force, since I'm assuming that the mass is moving in this direction, I have an uh, opposing force due to the friction. All right, so based on that, um, I also know that I have a normal force and I have my um, weight force acting down. But since we're only interested in the uh, position in the x direction, um, these are I'm not going to have to worry about my normal force and my weight force since they balance each other out. I'm going to uh, worry about my spring force and my friction force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum the forces that are acting in the x direction. All right, so the sum of the forces that are acting in the x direction are our spring force, Right, and our friction force. Okay, from statics and dynamics, we also know that that spring force is proportional to the uh, stretch or the displacement of the uh, spring. <clears throat> so um, since it's acting in the negative x direction, it's going to be negative k times the displacement x minus the equilibrium stretch or the equilibrium uh, length of the spring. In this case, since we've determined or since we've established that uh, the mass, the position of the mass is going to be zero at the equilibrium length of the spring or at the unstretched length of the spring, we're going to assume that xs is zero. So that term is going to go away. All right, so for the friction force, um, we haven't looked at this before, but the friction force is acting in the negative x direction or the, uh, in the opposite of the direction of the velocity. And it is uh, proportional, the friction force is going to be proportional by this constant c to the velocity at which the mass is moving. All right, so we have, um, we have negative kx minus c times the velocity. All right, all of that because we are not in equilibrium, has to be equal to the mass times the acceleration, F equals ma. All right, so the mass is m, a, has to be equal to negative kx minus cv. So now we're going to do a little bit of manipulation here. Again, we're looking for the dynamic model of the position of the mass as a function of time. All right, so how is um, acceleration and how is velocity going to be related to position? Well, we know from dynamics, our study of dynamics, that acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to time, and velocity is the first derivative of position with respect to time. So if I do that, I have m times the second derivative of position with respect to time is equal to negative kx minus c times the first derivative of position with respect to time. Okay. 
And doing a little bit of rearranging here, I find that I can rewrite this as a homogeneous second order differential equation that looks like this. Oops, sorry. I'm going to bring these terms over to the other side, to the uh, left hand side of the equation. So I'll have plus c dx dt plus kx is equal to zero. So the model that describes the behavior or the position of this mass as a function of time is going to be given by this general second order differential equation. And it's a homogeneous equation because I have no external forces acting on our mass. All right, so this is how we describe a source free um, uh, second order system. And this is going to be one of the general second order equation models that we're going to use. Now, to completely solve a second order differential equation, we need two additional pieces of information. In addition to um, the differential equation, we need to know what the initial position of the mass is. So the position at time equals zero, all right, which I'm going to call x sub zero. And to completely solve the system, I also need to know the initial velocity of the system. So the velocity at time zero, or dx dt evaluated at time zero, which I'm going to call v naught, or v sub zero. All right, so with these pieces of information, I can solve the source-free or homogeneous second order uh, model that's going to describe the position of this mass as a function of time when we release it from this initial position.